What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Movie Rays. The Stranger Things series has been one of the most popular TV shows on the Netflix streaming platform for quite some time now. And you must have wondered, how did they even create the Upside Down, the Demogorgon, or even the Deprivation Tank? Well, search no more. Today we are going to talk about just that. We are going to talk about some CGI scenes you have no clue about, and how the crew managed to pull them off. What is that they used to make the series that much more spectacular? Enjoy! The Creation of the Demogorgon Starting off our list with one of the strangest and creepiest monsters at the same time on the show, which appeared right from the first season of the show. The Duffer brothers from the very first episode were keen on using as little CGI effects as they possibly could, and thus the Demogorgon was born, or at least the way we know him by now. Actor Mark Steger is the one behind the suit who actually used his real hands to move the hands and the body of the Demogorgon. Mark's limbs were covered in green in order for them to be removed easily in the post-production process. Mark did a tremendous job in doing so, however, that might be the cause of him not being the first time in a situation like this. He has also performed and choreographed movements for other huge projects before showing up on the set of Stranger Things. These huge projects involve the post-apocalyptic movie World War Z, I Am Legend, as well as the supernatural drama that has been so popular all over the world, American Horror Story. According to him, when the Duffer brothers were explaining to him the concept of the creature, they often referred to classic animatronic movie monsters such as the early movies of David Cronenberg, John Carpenter's The Thing, and of course, none other than Alien, from the movie, well, Alien. However, after all this, there was just one other direction which brought the creature that much more into the spotlight of things, and that was that the Demogorgon should look like and bring you the feeling of a shark from the movie Jaws. Baby Dart to Demodog His name is D'Artagnan. Even from the first sight of the appearance of D'Artagnan, the creature Dustin tried to make his own pet, all of us, all of the viewers, knew it was going to be bad news for the gang as time passed by. The crew made the creature unrecognizable to the other members of his species to make the plot that much more intriguing, and this is the reason why Dart's first two stages of development looked nothing like his big brothers, the Demogorgons. However, this cute but deadly creature turned out to be a much harder task than what the Duffer brothers expected. If you pay attention to it, Dart has no eyes and no face at all, yet he still managed to come across as an emotional, cute, and potential pet, and lure us into seeing him as a cute little pet we can all own in our homes. Thus, with all these negatives of him not having an actual face or any facial expressions resembling a living thing, the team behind the scenes used his body to create some form of a body language which we would accept, and with it to emote of what it does at any given moment. And as a plus, the CGI team used the one thing to convey emotion the most, his dark, tiny mouth. And all of this proved to be only half of the work for Dart to look the part. He needed a voice, too. Thus, the sound designer Craig Hannigan stepped in, and he revealed to us a little secret. His main inspiration and focus regarding the voice of the little monsters were the old-time classics, The Gremlins. And last but not least, the CGI team was tasked with probably one of the hardest things to do when Dart was concerned, and that was how to integrate his CGI effects to the rest of the cast. Whenever they would have a scene together, and when everything is done, we can see the real deal behind all this effort, and it was amazing. Wouldn't you say so? The Mind Flayer we can't hear you. As we mentioned before, the Duffer brothers tried to use as less CGI effects as possible, and thus in season 1, the relation was something like 80 to 20% practical to CGI. However, by season 3, this was not so easy to pull off, and the relation jumped all the way to 50 to 50% practical to CGI effects. And the big baddie, the Mind Flayer, was all CGI, because there was just no other way to do it. The making of the mean monster was harder than expected, but the crew managed to pull it off. Paul Graff has been assigned to model the monster after an 80s cinematic monster, and this time the before-mentioned Carpenter's The Thing became the form, and was the blueprint of creating the Mind Flayer. And this is the reason why Season 3 has those fleshy and gooey slimes rolling all over the floor, a creature hybrid in its nature, something between a creature and an effect simulation of traveling goop. 
And in the scene where the creature is chasing Nancy and Jonathan is doing everything he can to distract the creature from her. All of the crew had to watch their supervisor do funny things, knocking everything in his path symbolizing the monstrosity, while also wearing a huge silver round helmet on his head, and one time even ending with a very funny blooper from behind the scenes with him bumping into the camera, which brought laughter to everyone involved. As for the huge silver metal ball on his head, that is just a special effect kazoo helmet that shows a 360 view, which the crew used to see all the light sources and perfectly integrate all the shadows around the creature itself in post-production. Now this process was very fulfilling. It somehow made them sad that they couldn't pull it off the way they wanted. The Upside Down He can even go underneath the rope. Upside Down, down. Exactly. One of the most unknown places of the series has to be the Upside Down, a place where all of these previously mentioned monsters came from. We practically know nothing about it, but we can dive a little deeper as to how the CGI used in those shots brought this mysterious place to life, and how all of it was created using an innovative mix of digital and practical effects. This hybrid approach is the reason why the atmosphere and appearance of it made it look so convincing. The digital team from Season 2 onward used real settings in the other dimension, and believe us, it was not an easy task, as all the sets had to be scanned, rescanned, and reconstructed with 3D models so that we can get what we have when we watch the series on the big screen. One of the most used sets of the series for shooting in the Upside Down was the Buyer's House, a practical location for many scene shots, and this is because it was built in such a way that all the walls could have been easily removed, and for the CGI team to specially enhance any practical effects. To end with a bang, other unique qualities of the Upside Down were definitely the distinctive spores, and yeah, most of those were computer generated. At first, the Duffer Brothers wanted them to be entirely practical, but most of the time, the spores didn't behave like the whole crew wanted, and also the cast was not really excited about spending a lot of time filming in this dimension, with all those sort of, like, flakes just floating around and sticking to their faces, or in the worst case scenario, inhaling them, thus 90% of the spores became CGI ones. At first, it may sound easy, but it wasn't. It's not just throwing on a snow filter and calling it a day. These flakes had to be made to interact with the surrounding of the scene, as well as be able to exist in a real three-dimensional space, while also for them to be easily maneuvered through when the camera needed to be moved as naturally as possible in the middle of the scene. So the crew had to draw around the actors and the features of the background to create space and depth for the spores to play off the surroundings, just as if they were really there. On a related note, tell us down in the comments below which Stranger Things scenes has been your favorite and why. And also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.